There are several scenes in The Last Jedi that are disliked by many fans, from hyperspace ramming to Leia Poppins to the slowest chase scene ever recorded on film. But from what I've observed, there's one scene that dissenters detest above all others, and that's the flashback scene where Luke recalls considering killing his nephew in cold blood. Well, much like how one of my previous videos detailed why Rose's big scene failed, I think this scene with Luke is also being misinterpreted, and if you analyze it a bit closer, we'll not only see evidence of a semi-hidden force power, but we'll also get a fresh perspective on the source of Luke's shame, and a better understanding of the cost of his isolation. First off, let's take a brief look back at the history of Force Visions in the past seven films. We will watch your career with great interest. Everything is proceeding as I have foreseen. <laughs> Anakin having a vision of his mother and then trying to rescue her completely backfired. He couldn't save her. He didn't get any sort of closure by getting to see her one last time. As a direct result of his force vision, a huge part of the darkness within him was born. He never would have slaughtered women and children in his anger, never would have had that on his conscience. The good in him was later tormented by the evil he had done. I killed them. I killed them all. I'm a Jedi. I know I'm better than this. This was a terrible situation he was only ever involved with in the first place because a force vision had led him there. Later we see Anakin misinterpret his visions about Padme dying so that he makes the exact decision that causes his visions to come true. We see Luke misinterpreting his visions and rushing off to help his friends who didn't actually need his help. Lando rescued them, all Luke accomplished was walking into a trap nearly getting captured, losing a hand, and very nearly getting himself killed. Obi and Yoda both warn Luke against trusting in visions. And even in this same film, we see that both Kylo and Rey had visions that turned out to be incorrect. He saw a vision of her turning to join him, she saw a vision of him turning to join her. This wasn't Snoke manipulating them, all he did was bridge their minds. They both saw force visions, just like Luke and Anakin before them, that turned out to be traps. In all of the films, we never actually see force visions show the future in a way beneficial to the user. They're always misinterpreted, although in the case of Rey, they do show some potentially useful information but there's enough confusion involved so that these visions aren't actually helpful to her either. For instance, this cloaked figure is featured prominently in her visions, but she has absolutely no idea who it is, and when she actually meets him, it's because those visions scared her, making her run away so that she was caught out in the open alone, making this another instance of Force visions resulting in negative consequences. Force visions are never interpreted correctly in any film, even the ancient prophecy of the Chosen One was misinterpreted. Everyone thought bringing balance to the Force meant utterly destroying the Sith. It was said that you would destroy the Sith, not join them! Now, some Force visions are 100% accurate. We see Yoda having a vision of Anakin being in pain at his mother's death. Sidious had perfected this technique and knew the rebel fleet would be coming to attack Endor. And landed on Endor. Yes, I know. In fact, the main villains seem to always be able to perfectly see everything except when it involves their death. I have foreseen it. He will come to you and then you will bring him before me. My point is that Force visions are tricky. They can show you the future, even show you exactly what will happen or what is happening. But only a few very wise and experienced people master the technique, enough to know what is a possible future and what is an absolute future. Sidious sees the absolute future. He knows if he does nothing, his vision will come true and Luke will come to him. Anakin sees a possible future. If he had done nothing, his vision would never have come true. 
So, to sum up, seeing the future accurately through Force Visions is possible, but we've never actually seen any Jedi in the films use the power to see exactly what the future would hold. Until this scene. This is Luke's quote-unquote hidden Force power that everyone missed. Luke had achieved this 100% mastery level of interpreting Force Visions, just like Palpatine had. Force visions usually happen while in deep meditation. This is the very first time in any film where we've seen a Jedi initiate the power purposefully on command and get a successful vision. Yes, in Empire we see Yoda look into the future to try to see if Han and Leia would die, but he doesn't succeed and there's really no reason he should sense them at all. He's never even met them. He doesn't have any connection with either of them. I find it much more likely that he's actually looking into Luke's future and trying to gauge if there will be sadness, and he can't. But Luke puts his hand over Ben and looks into his thoughts, reads his emotional state, and sees his future. From what we've experienced in the films, this technique wasn't known to the Jedi before Luke created it. This is a force vision on a level of Darth Sidious far beyond what any Jedi was ever capable of. Another piece of evidence proving that Luke had mastered this technique is because he had already learned his lesson about trusting Force visions when he was young. When Ryan wrote this scene, he looked back at the character arc that Luke went through over the original three films. Luke almost died because he rushed into trusting a false vision when he was young. Obviously, Luke would never rush into trusting a vision again, especially now that he's had 30 plus years of training after learning how tricky visions are. I believe we all missed what Ryan was trying to show us. The only explanation for Luke immediately trusting this vision is that he knew with absolute certainty that this one was real and would come to pass exactly as he saw it. Everything is proceeding as I have foreseen. That's the first of three hidden meanings of this scene. Luke had absolutely perfected the ability to predict the future via the Force. The second hidden meaning of this scene is that we can finally see what Ryan intended to be the true source of Luke's shame. Look at how broken his character is. This man is still absolutely devastated 15 years later. Why is he so broken? He saw the future with absolute clarity. I saw darkness, but it was beyond what I ever imagined. Ben Solo was going to turn evil, personally kill thousands, help kill millions. Luke started to kill Ben but couldn't bring himself to do it. Ben burns down the temple, kills Luke's students, and runs away. The exact thing happened to Obi-Wan, and we see he is the same man, haunted by what happened, but still mostly the same. So why is Luke so devastated? Luke says it was Snoke that seduced Ben to turn. Snoke had already turned his heart. Leia puts the blame on Snoke. It was Snoke. He seduced our son to the dark side. Han puts the blame on Snoke. Snoke is using you for your power. Everyone knows that Luke raised the boy right, and it was the evil influence of a corrupt man who turned the boy towards darkness. Obi-Wan had similar emotions. He felt guilty. I have failed you, Anakin. I have failed you. But he also knew it wasn't truly his fault. You have done that yourself. You have allowed this. Dark Lord to twist your mind until Although he feels guilty, he knows that Anakin made his own decisions. So why is Luke so devastated when his apprentice fell, compared to how devastated Obi-Wan was? What the audience mistakenly came to believe is that nearly killing Ben is the source of Luke's shame. But listen to his line again. Leia blamed Snoke, but it was me. I failed. Because I was Luke Skywalker. Jedi Master, a legend. Earlier, Luke admitted that it was Snoke who turned Ben, so what does this line mean? I failed because I was Luke Skywalker, Jedi Master, a legend. Knowing that Luke doesn't blame himself for Ben turning, what does this line mean? This scene is a direct parallel with Obi-Wan. Luke is so ashamed because he didn't have the strength to end Kylo Ren then and there. 
I will do what I must. I thought I could stop it. Pass like a fleeting shadow. This moment did not create Kylo Ren. This moment became confused in Luke's memory. What he later described to Rey contradicts itself. Snoke had already turned his heart. And the last thing I saw were the eyes of a frightened boy whose master had failed him. It can't be both. Either in this moment, Ben felt betrayed and turned evil, or he was already evil before this scene began. Luke says both happened. And it's not just in this scene, in many others as well. It seems that Ryan intentionally wrote Luke's lines to not make sense, showing that his memories are corrupted by guilt and muddied by time. Think about it, Ben had to have already been evil before this moment. He had already seduced the other students to leave with him. He had already planned with them that this was going to eventually happen. Do you think Ben and a handful of other students utterly wiped out all these other Jedi without some kind of plan in place? Do you think these other students turned evil with Ben at the drop of a hat? Did Ben say, hey guys, Messer just drew his laser sword on me while I was asleep. That really made me feel bad. Let's kill everyone and burn down the temple. No, no. No, no matter how much they respected or feared him, Luke's other students would never have instantly turned to the dark side just because he asked them to. Ben had to have spent months slowly seducing them to turn to the dark side with him. I want you to join me. We can rule together and bring a new order to the galaxy. This is further proof that Luke had indeed mastered interpreting force visions, because unlike his father, Luke's actions here don't cause the vision to come true. If Luke doesn't draw his blade on Ben, Ben is still already turned to the dark side and has already turned other students to the dark side. There is nothing Luke could say to talk Ben and his other students back to the light. We've already seen multiple times that doesn't work. Leave everything else behind while we still can. Don't you see? We don't have to run away anymore. Don't lecture me, Obi-Wan. I see through the lies of the Jedi. Anakin, Chancellor Palpatine is evil! From my point of view, the Jedi are evil! Ryan made this scene such a perfect comparison to the Obi-Anakin one. We've already seen that corrupted students can't be swayed by words. Luke sees exactly what the future holds, regardless of what action he himself takes. There were only two failures that Luke had in this storyline, not sensing Snoke was turning Ben and his other students towards evil, and not being strong enough to do what must be done. By the time I realized I was no match for the darkness rising in him, it was too late. Leia blamed Snoke, but... It was me. I failed. Because I was Luke Skywalker. Jedi Master. A legend. Luke Skywalker. Jedi, 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 Jedi Master. Skywalker. Jedi Master. A legend. And a legend doesn't kill children in their sleep, even though that's exactly what needed to happen. By this point, Luke saw that Ben was already beyond redemption. At this point, Luke had to choose between allowing his nephew to slaughter untold millions and killing the child in his sleep. This is why so many of Luke's lines in The Last Jedi seem so contradictory. Why he'll put the blame on Snoke in one sentence and then seem to solely blame himself in another. It's because he's actually talking about two different things. Luke blamed himself not for creating Kylo Ren, that he very obviously blamed Snoke for. Luke blamed himself for not being strong enough to stop it. Because Luke wasn't strong enough to make the hard call like Obi-Wan did, every single thing he saw in his vision came true. Ben killed millions because Luke let him live. Ben literally kept a tub full of his victim's ashes in his bedroom. He was so far down the rabbit hole of evil. That's seriously messed up wanting to sleep next to the ashes of all of the people you personally killed? Now, you may argue that Luke thought he could save Ben with time, or that Luke foresaw Rey coming years later to turn Ben back to the light. But no matter how you look at it, in this moment, Luke sacrificed millions, possibly even billions, to save a single life. That is the true source of Luke's shame in The Last Jedi. 
That is the true reason he ran away and never even spoke to Han or Leia. Because he had perfected the ability to see into the future, but he wasn't paying enough attention to see that their son had turned evil. And by the time Luke saw that evil, he was too weak-willed to stop it. It's amazing that we've all missed the deeper meaning Ryan had put into this scene, but part of the problem has to do with the third and final aspect of this scene, which was exactly how psychologically damaging Ryan intended this scene to be for Luke long term. Once you look more closely at Luke's dialogue, you will realize he's in a far, far worse mental state than it initially appears. His memories are clouded, he constantly contradicts himself and misquotes historical facts. As a coping mechanism, he created false memories, one where he wasn't the bad guy that he had convinced himself he was in real life. Luke remembers being protective about his new Jedi Order, but take a look back at his character and you'll see what he was really thinking at the time. He would bring destruction and pain and death and the end of everything I love because of what he will become. I knew you'd come back, I just knew it! The end of everything I love because of what he will become. Then we again see how warped Luke's memory is. Remember, Luke just said that Ben was already turned, already evil. So why would Kylo Ren be frightened here? With the eyes of a frightened boy whose master had failed him. Well, of course he was frightened. He was a spy who had been found out. His master, who was far more experienced and more powerful, now knew that Ben had aligned himself with Snoke. Now Luke knew that Ben was seducing other students to the dark side with him, so of course Ben was terrified. And now Ben's reaction to pull down the house not just on Luke, but directly down on himself as well, makes total sense. It was a desperate move to defeat a much stronger opponent. Luke wasn't even swinging at Ben, Luke was just standing there. Ben grabbed his lightsaber and swung at Luke. Luke said, Ben, no, and Ben responded by pulling the house down, burying them both. In Luke's grief-addled mind, he thinks he's the one at fault here, when in fact, it was Ben who tried to kill him, twice! Once by attacking with his lightsaber, and then again by pulling the building down on top of them. Ben's actions make no sense in this scene if he were innocent, reacting out of betrayal and panic. He would have just looked at his master in confusion, wondering what kind of new training routine this was. Ryan could not have made this more clear and we all missed it. Take a closer look at Ben. He's not groggy, he's not confused from being jerked out of REM sleep. He's immediately awake and alert and knows what's going on. And the only reason for him to panic and try to kill Luke is out of pure terror at knowing he's been found out. And later on, Ben did the same thing Luke did, altering his memories as a coping mechanism. He pictured Luke being evil and attacking him, which in his mind condones his decision to turn evil. But in reality, Luke didn't cause Ben to turn. So why is Luke constantly so ashamed? It was me. I failed whose master had failed him. I was weak. I failed you, Ben. Because a true Jedi is not weak. A true Jedi does what he must even if that means killing someone you considered your brother. You were my brother, Anakin! I loved you! Ryan duplicated the exact relationship shift that happened with Obi-Wan and Anakin. The apprentice turned evil, leaving the master to make the hard call. You're going to kill him, aren't you? Obi did what had to be done, even though it tore him apart. But Luke was not as strong as Obi-Wan was, leaving Luke to deal with the shame of his weakness and the knowledge that he had personally doomed millions of people to die. Now, here I want to point out why I keep insinuating that Obi-Wan was successful, even though he didn't actually kill Anakin. 
Well, when you examine the juxtaposition of Obi and Luke that Ryan gave us, it helps explain the personalities of their older selves. Obi-Wan was haunted by the past, but he wasn't ashamed by it. Because in his heart, he knew that he had done everything in his power to stop Anakin after he turned. But Luke was both haunted by the past and deeply ashamed by it. Because not only did he not try to stop it when he had the chance, Luke felt responsible. He just walked away from everything. Abandoning his young student to the dark side. Obi-Wan was able to live and die in peace, knowing he had been his best self in the face of hardship. Luke suffered alone for 15 years, knowing it was his fault for breaking when his strength was most needed. Because the First Order only rose to power after Luke disappeared. If Luke kills Ben here, Luke never runs away, and the First Order is too scared to reveal themselves. Luke weans out his other fallen pupils, and his true students grow up to be full Jedi. And now whenever Snoke does reveal himself and the First Order, he now has a dozen fully trained Jedi Knights opposing him, with Grand Master Luke Skywalker leading them. This is the third thing we all missed, that Luke had slipped into a deep, deep depression that would eventually end in suicide. A perfect representation of a soldier with PTSD who tries to deal with it on his own and fails. I came to this island to die. Luke immediately ran away from everyone who could have supported him. His sister, his best friend, he didn't even take R2, his closest companion that he always had by his side. Luke isolated himself completely, wallowing in his grief in complete solitude. He had no one to help him cope with his depression, and we all missed how utterly insane it drove him. He's constantly changing in and out of his Jedi robes, a visual indication of how conflicted he is emotionally. He looks like he's always on the verge of breaking down in tears, especially when he finally faces Ben again and sees what he's become. His mood swings wildly. Sometimes he sounds just like we'd expect Luke Skywalker to sound only for him to quickly revert to his broken state of mind. It didn't scare me enough then. It does now. He is also constantly changing his mind, deciding to do something and then losing the will to follow through. He takes the saber from Rey, only to decide he doesn't want it. He only gives Rey one lesson about using the Force. He doesn't come remotely close to fulfilling his promise. I will teach you the ways of the Jedi. He reconnects with the Force and decides to make a closer connection with Rey, then changes his mind again. Leave this island now! He decides to burn, burn the down. tree, then doesn't burn the tree. He says he's destroying the books, then immediately changes his mind and tries to save the books. He decides to end the Jedi, but doesn't really want to. It's time for the Jedi to end. So it is time for the Jedi Order to end. Outside of comedy films, I'm not sure I've ever seen a character be so indecisive, which I think is further proof of his broken mental state. We can also look at how happy Yoda is to see Luke again, but look at Luke's reaction to finally seeing Yoda again. Ah, Skywalker, Mr. Hawaii. Master Yoda. His tone of voice, his facial expression, he's reacting almost with hatred instead of relief and joy at seeing an old friend and mentor. The closer you look, the more you will see that his character intentionally doesn't make sense. Let's take a deeper look at his dialogue throughout the film. Half of everything he says is blatantly incorrect. You don't need Luke Skywalker. Yes, they did. He was the distraction that gave them time to escape. What? I'm gonna walk out with a laser sword and face down the whole First Order? Yeah, that's exactly what he ended up doing. Impressive. Every word in that sentence was wrong. No, it wasn't. It is a power that the Jedi have. It does let them control people, and it does make things float. Yes, he was trying to teach her a deeper lesson, but blatantly lying to your young pupil is not the way to go about doing it. That force does not belong to the Jedi. Yes, it does. That's the point of the entire franchise. 
Yes, the Force exists in every being, but only the Jedi and Sith are trained to actually control it. That's what makes them special. Now that they're extinct, the Jedi are romanticized, deified. The Jedi were always deified. For 6,000 years, they were some of the most respected beings in the entire galaxy. No one can kill a Jedi. Them being wiped out didn't change the public opinion of them. In fact, if anything, them being wiped out gave the entire Jedi Order a bad reputation, not a good one, since Palpatine had framed them as the bad guys. Either way though, Luke is dead wrong yet again. The legacy of the Jedi is failure. The Jedi were champions of peace for over 6,000 years, and now Luke thinks that one room full of masters letting the Order get drug into a war has negated the entire 6,000 year old legacy of the Order? At the height of their powers, they allowed Darth Sidious to rise, create the Empire, and wipe them out. The second they found out that Sidious was Palpatine, they sent four of their strongest warriors to try to stop him. The Jedi were also constantly fighting Palpatine, trying to prevent him from accruing as much power as he did, even before he became the Emperor. They didn't allow it, they did everything in their power, even giving their lives to try to stop him. It was a Jedi Master who was responsible for the training and creation of Darth Vader. This line is so incorrect, it's insulting. Obi-Wan Kenobi did not create Darth Vader. In fact, he did everything in his power to save Anakin from fully becoming Vader. Luke is 100% wrong. Anakin is responsible for his fall to the dark side, not Obi-Wan. You have done that yourself. And in my hubris, I thought I could train him. I could pass on my strengths. That's not hubris. He did train Ben, and he did pass on his strengths. It was Ben's own weakness that was his downfall, same as Anakin. A child with a strong connection to the Force needs a teacher to lead them down the right path. You need a teacher! You need a teacher. A child with great power needs guidance. If Luke hadn't trained Ben, there would have been an even greater chance that Ben abuses his power for selfish reasons, leading him to the dark side. It was Luke's responsibility to train Ben. Pride had nothing to do with it. I went to confront him. No, he didn't. It was the middle of the night while Ben was asleep. Luke didn't sneak quietly in to have a confrontation. He was trying to avoid one. Luke can't bring himself to read the ancient texts, so he's made up false wisdom that he thinks would be in them, and then callously passes on that false knowledge to Rey like it's real. The books in the Jedi Library say ignore that. Only act when you can maintain balance. Oh. Read them, have you? Well, I mean One minute he's lying to her saying a true Jedi would do nothing. The next he's telling her that taking action is what is really needed. Do you know what a true Jedi Knight would do right now? Nothing. I thought they were in danger. I was trying to do something. And that's what the resistance needs, not some old failed husk of a religion. It's fairly obvious why this line sounds utterly deranged. No one's ever really gone. But Luke says he can't save Ben, Leia agrees with him, and Luke immediately does a 180 and changes his mind. And I can't save him. No one's ever really gone. And I can't save him. No one's ever really gone. The rebellion is reborn today. There's only 15 people left alive, and we just saw that literally no one in the entire galaxy cares about the rebellion. How is it reborn? They've heard us. But no one's coming. The war is just beginning. <sighs> Dude, your sister has been fighting this war for the past 15 years without you. No, it isn't just beginning because you finally decided to show up. Strike me down in anger and I'll always be with you, just like your father. Have we seen any indication from Kylo that he misses his father at all? Any indication Kylo even regrets killing him, or thinks about him, ever? Nothing Luke says makes any sense, and Ryan even went so far as to have people constantly point out each time Luke was being irrational. Did you hear a word I just said? It's a hubris. That's not true. And a Jedi who saved him.
You didn't fail Kylo. Kylo failed you. The sacred Jedi texts! Oh, read them, have you? Well, I mean... And that's what the Resistance needs, not some old failed husk of a religion. I understand that across the galaxy, our real friends are really dying. And these two times when he says... Amazing. Impressive. Every word, Every word you just said was wrong. was wrong. Once you realize how wrong Luke himself always is, these lines take on an extremely ironic double meaning. At least 13 different lines of Luke's dialogue were blatantly incorrect. 13! That can't be an accident, it has to be an intentional plot point. Ryan showed us 13 different times that Luke was so mentally broken that he couldn't even form a coherent thought. And I can't save him. No one's ever really gone. So what is the deeper meaning that Ryan was trying to show us? By showing Luke constantly on the verge of tears, by not having him make any sense, constantly having people call him out on it, and twice having Luke claim everything someone else said was wrong, when he's the one not making any sense. Once you begin looking for it, the clues are scattered everywhere. We see that he scuttled his ship, so that he has no choice but to stay in exile and die alone. We see him risking his life for no reason, because he doesn't care anymore. I came to this island to die. Remember, he's not connected to the Force. He's a normal human throwing himself off of a cliff. He could easily walk down to the beach and fish there, or live off of sea cow milk and roasted porks. The only explanation for him risking his life day after day after day just to get dinner is that this scene is further confirmation of just how suicidal he actually is. To say that if the Jedi die, the light dies is vanity. Can you feel that? Nobody said anything about the Jedi dying. That came directly out of Luke's own head as he tries to rationalize his suicidal thoughts. Luke wants to kill himself, but he can't bring himself to make the leap. Luke wasn't just cut off from the Force, he wasn't just in hiding. He was so psychologically damaged that he no longer cared about anything. And even though he wanted to die, he still lacked the strength of will to take a life, even his own. The subtle comparison to suicide that Ryan gave us is inescapable. Both mother and son suffered devastating emotional losses and then, just like his mother before him, completely out of the blue, Luke suddenly loses the will to live. Once you look deeper at his dialogue, the meaning is clear. Luke Skywalker is a broken man, so heartbreakingly depressed that it drove him to the brink of insanity. You just ran so fast! And his extreme isolation only compounded the problem so that the only escape he could see was suicide. Go away. Go away! Leave this island, now! We will give him the death he desires. I came to this island to die. This scene, like so many others in the sequel trilogy, has been completely misinterpreted by the audience. When you look deeper, analyze the dialogue, character backstory, and previously established story elements, you see the true meaning that Ryan intended. Luke was one of the most powerful Jedi ever, being able to completely master controlling and interpreting visions to see the future. But in the midst of his power was weakness, as we see the juxtaposition of two beloved characters. I have I failed, failed you, Anakin. You, I have failed you. I'm sorry. I should have I'm sure you are. Take over. One who had the strength of will to do what must be done. And one whose weakness ruined not only himself and his family, but the entire galaxy as well. And finally, we see how isolating yourself from your loved ones and wallowing in your depression can utterly break your spirit, leaving you a crippled shell of your former self not even realizing the very words you speak no longer make any sense. 
I know that this interpretation I have presented is an utter reversal of how we have all viewed this scene and this character, but after analyzing the scenes, I think this interpretation is correct, and I'm very curious to see how the fandom at large responds to this idea. If you'd like more content like this, please share this video. This channel will only grow with your help. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.